Okay. Uh, yesterday we started with the uh, queuing theory. Okay. So uh, why it is important? Because queues can happen anywhere on the highway, on the ramp, in the intersections, and so on and so forth. So the queuing theory explains uh, the behavior of the queue. Okay. How it is formed and when it is formed, how long will it take, how many vehicles will be there, and so on and so forth. We have discussed queues in uh, one of the previous topics as well. Which one was that? In which topic we were talking about queues? Shock waves. Okay, so they are also shock wave is a phenomenon of having the queue, but uh, the queuing theory is more than that. So when you have uh, in the queuing theory, you have to consider the following factors. The first one is the rate of arrival. Okay, it could be uniform or it could be uh, having some distribution. Okay, uh, what do we mean by uniform? We will talk about. It. Uh, then we have number of channels, the points from which the demand can be served, number of channels, the number of points. And then we have the method of serving, okay, the discipline of serving, which could be last in, first out, or, or first in, first out, okay. We discuss, or we were discussing the first case, which is DD1. DD1 means you have deterministic arrival, so they are arriving at and deterministic departure as well. So they are coming at, uh, you know, they, they are, there's no probability here. Okay, we are talking about a single value every time. Okay, every time has a single value of arrival and a single value of departure. There is no chance here of any other value. Okay, and one means the number of channels you have. Okay, in this we can have that the uh, arrival rate is varying demand is constant Dem uh, sorry arrival is varying and the service or departure is constant or the other way around departure is varying arrival is constant you can have both constants or both varying we did one couple of examples this one we finished okay so arrival rate was something else before 20 minutes after 20 minutes it's changed Okay, and the departure rate was constant, which was something, it was 15 seconds per vehicle, so uh, 4 per minute, okay. So, uh, and we were required to calculate the operational characteristics of the queue. Operational characteristics means uh, the number of vehicles in the queue, the delay, the time required to clear the queue, how many vehicles arrive in the queue, how many vehicles leave and so on and so forth, okay. Now this problem was simpler because there was no equation here, okay? Arrival rate before 20 minutes is one value, after 20 minutes is another value, and that's it. And departure rate is just a single value which is 15 seconds per vehicle, okay? So we made the, so if you want to calculate how many vehicles arrive before 20 minutes, this is 480 per hour. You calculate it per minute, multiply by time. This is the number of vehicles you have. Okay. Then you have four vehicles per minute departure. You want to calculate how many vehicles leave in five minutes. Four multiplied by five. Okay. So th this was a simpler equation where you just multiply the rate with time. You get number of vehicles. Okay. And then we plotted it. Okay. And from the plot, we can find out two things. When will the queue finish? So arrival departure become equal. That means the queue is finished, the clearance time. And we can also calculate the total delay, which is the difference of area between the two lines. And these are straight lines, so we can take the area as the, the triangle area. Okay, half base into height. Then we were looking at this example, which I messed up in the end. But we have a national park, which has uh, two gates. Okay, one gate will have 80% of the demand, the other one will have 20% of the demand. Okay, the uh, queue starts to happen at, at 5.45 a.m. and the park opens at 6 a.m. So there's a 15 minute gap in the queue and the departure, the service. People are coming 15 minutes in advance of the service. Okay, and another thing was, the arrival rate is not constant, it's not a value, it's an equation. So every minute it is changing. Arrival rate is changing every minute, okay? 
So we have an equation here. So I quickly go through. We need number of vehicles. All right. Number of vehicles. All right. Okay. So this is the equation for arrival rate. Okay. If I give you arrival rate, if it's a constant value, for example, if I say arrival rate is 4 per minute, 4 per minute, and I ask you to calculate number of vehicles in t minutes, 4 multiplied by t, number of vehicles. Okay? But now it's an equation. So to calculate the number from the rate equation, you have to take the integral. Okay? So we took the integral, this is the integral, this is the integral, but we said 80% of the demand is from one gate, 20% from the other gate. We are doing it for the 80% side. We are doing it for the gate which has 80% of the demand. So the equation gives you total arrival. So you have to subtract the 20% from it. Okay. So this is total minus 20% of total. This will give you the arrival for this gate. Okay. So this is the equation for number of arrivals in t minutes. Okay. The people who are leaving, they are leaving at a rate of 20 per minute. People who are leaving the system, they are leaving at the rate of 20 per minute. 20 per minute. Okay. But they will start leaving at 6 a.m. My T starts at 5.45. Okay, so between 5.45 and 6, nobody will leave. Okay? Clear? So, if I want to calculate number of vehicles left, I know it is 20 per minute. So, 20 into number of minutes, right? 20 into number of minutes will give you the number, right? Number of vehicles. Okay. If you do 20 into T, but the T is starting at 5.45. We know at 5.45 the gate is not open. Minus 15. Okay, so minus 15 to make it at 6. Okay, the T here starts from 5.45. The gate does not open up till 15 minutes. So that's why we did minus 15 here. Okay, so the actual equation, if both t are at the same time, if this is also from 6 o'clock, then it will be 20 into t, simple. 20 multiplied by, but because there is a gap of 15 minutes, we have to subtract the gap. Clear? Okay. Now you can see, number of vehicles arrived, number of vehicles left. I am putting them equal. When they will be equal, when arrival equals to departure, what happens to the queue? Zero. Q, Q is gone. So when you put them equal and calculate the value of T, this is the time in which the Q has gone. The Q is cleared. The Q is cleared in 33.6 minutes. Okay, 33.6 minutes. How many vehicles arrive in 33.6 minutes? I have the arrival equation. Now I know the time. So I put the time here. I know how many vehicles arrive in this much time. Clear? Okay. Then we want to calculate the total delay. Total delay is the difference of area under arrival curve and departure curve. Difference of area under arrival curve and departure curve. Equation for arrival, this one. You want the area under this equation area under the curve of this equation. To find out the area under the curve, I have to do the integral. Okay. Minus the area under the departure equation. This is the departure equation. To find out the area under this equation, I have to take the integral or because it's what? This is what? Why I am doing like this? Why I took integral here and why I am doing it like this without integral? Even if you take the integral, you get the same answer, by the way. You can take the integral, no problem. You can take the integral, you get the same answer. Okay? 
So what would be the integral of this? Tell me. What would be the integral of this equation? Hmm? 20 t square? 10 t square. 10 t square, okay. Minus 15 t. Minus 15 t. Okay, so even if you don't take the integral, there's no problem. Oh, sorry, you take the integral, there's no problem. Okay? So you take the integral of this equation, take the integral of this equation, subtract it, okay, you will get the total delay. Okay, but integral has limit, has a limit of time. Okay, time of two what? 33.6, six minutes. Okay, so you will take the integral from zero to 33.6. Integral of this minus integral of this. Okay. This will give you total delay. Total delay. Okay. The total delay is this much. Integral minus integral. Total delay is this much. Okay. Now I want average from total. What will you do? Divide by number of vehicles. How many vehicles we have in the queue? The number of vehicles arrived in this much time. Okay, the number of vehicles who arrived during this much time. Okay, so how many vehicles arrived in 33.6 minutes? 372. You have the total divided by 372, it will give you average delay per vehicle. Okay, it will give you average delay per vehicle. Clear? Okay. Hmm? Okay, if you do it for the other gate, if you do it for the other gate, the one, this gate has 80% of the demand. So I took the total minus 20%. The other gate has 20% of the demand. Okay, so you will take the total minus 80%. Okay, so this equation will change. So that means there will be a different time and there will be a different number of vehicles and everything will change. Okay, but this will remain the same. This will remain the same. No, sorry, this will also change. The other gate has a processing time of how much? 15 per minute. Okay? So both equations will change, that means everything will change. Okay? Okay? So the procedure is given here. You can uh, do the same thing for the other gate. Okay? And see the, uh, the values. Okay? Next example for the same case, we have DT1, okay? Deterministic arrival, deterministic departure, and only one channel, okay? Now this one is for a highway toll booth. This is the place where you have to pay some fine or tax or whatever. So you stop at a, like a check post, and you have to pay something, otherwise they will not let you leave, okay? So they observed the arrivals and departures for 60 minutes, okay? At this toll booth, and they found that they are not uniform. They are deterministic, but they are not uniform. Okay, so both of them have an equation. This is the equation for the arrival, and this is the equation for the departure. Okay, and what else? Where t is in minutes, uh, starting from the uh, observation period. Okay, we have to find out the total vehicle delay. Okay, and the longest queue. The total vehicle delay and the longest queue. Okay. Clear? Now, uh, how do we find out the total delay? What, what are the steps for finding out the total delay? Tell me. Huh? But before that, I should know something, right? I should have the equation for number of vehicles arriving and departing, right? Okay, I should have the uh, equation for number of vehicles arrive and departing. Let me do something. Okay, this is my arrival equation and this is my departure equation.
okay first of all these equations are for the rate of arrival and rate of departure okay sir, i have to sorry t i'm also missing t okay so uh, first of all i have to find out num the equation for number of vehicles arrived and number of vehicles departed how do i find out the equation this these equations are for the rate of arrival right the rate so how do i find out the number from the rate equation what did we do we did it in the last example as well integration. integration okay so to find out number of vehicles arrived i will integrate the first equation so it will be how much 2.2 t plus 0.17 upon 2 is how much Hmm? 0.07 it will be 1.17 t square upon 2 right so upon 2 is how much Three five eight five. What is this? Point one seven upon two, right? Okay. T square minus this will be upon three, right? How much is upon three? Point one, point zero zero one something. One one. Three to the power three. Okay, so this is our equation for number of vehicles arrived. Now we need the equation for number of vehicles departed. Okay, so one point two t. I'm taking integral. Okay, taking integral. Minus oh, sorry plus. How much is this point three five? Okay, clear. Okay. Hmm? No. Whatever. Which one? Which one? This here, right? Okay. So I know number of vehicles arrived and departed can be calculated from these equations. Okay. I want what the the total delay right total delay okay what's what's the next step tell me ah uh, find t okay t when which time I'm looking at when they will come equal Okay, so how much is t then? What is this? Even do it without calculation. Mm -hmm. Huh? Sixty. 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 Sixty point five. Okay. Sixty point five minutes. Okay. 
next step so we found the q will clear at 60.5 next step we want total delay now but we want total delay right total delay should we do this why would we why we are putting the time in the equation again because to calculate what number of vehicles and number of vehicles we did what with the number of vehicles to find out the average they are not asking for average so let us use move forward okay they are not asking for average okay total delay we have to take what now total delay was the difference between the yeah between two equations integral of the equation right difference between the integral of the equations the limit of pressure and yeah yeah ha huh? yes yes this one integral of this one minus integral of this one. for that much time okay so this will be 1.1 t square plus 0.05 divided by 3 how much Q minus point zero one one point zero zero one one divided by four. Okay, this is one equation minus integral of the departure equation, which is. Uh, one point two divided by two is point six. And point zero three five divided by three. How much? Huh? Okay, and we are doing it at t value of sixty point five. So how much is how much is it? It was point zero one one seven, right? Minutes, weekend minutes, yeah, possible. One to nine. Because this will be divided by the number of vehicles who have the average. So it should be a big number at this moment. It should be something thousand something. I don't know the answer, but it will be a big number. Should not be minus. Anybody else? We just put the value of t here, okay? We are putting t as sixty point five. We are not solving it for t or something. 
We're just putting the value of t. This is an equation. You just put the value of t. Anybody else? You didn't get minus, right? Huh? One six eight eight. Okay, winner. Huh? Just in democracy, right? One six eight eight. One six eight eight. Okay. Anyways, you can recheck your calculations with them or whatever. This is the total delay. Okay. This is a, any any problem with the approach, the steps. Okay, I know you have, but other people. Huh? Okay, very good, three votes. Now, the next step is to find out the length of the, uh, which one? The longest queue. Okay. The, uh, the length when the queue is the longest. Or the length of the longest queue. The last minute of the no. It will not be the last minute. Because at the, at the last minute, 60.5, what is happening? Q is, is cleared. So this is the time when the Q is finished totally. It's not the longest. How do I get the equation of the Q? Tell me. What do we define as Q? Q is what? Difference between? Between the two curves, okay? The difference between arrival and departure. Okay, the difference between arrival and departure. Do I have an equation for arrival? Okay, do I have an equation for departure? Yes. If, you, if I take the difference of these two equations, will it not become the equation of length of the Q? Okay, length of the Q is Weakers arrived minus weakers departed. Okay, so it is this equation. Minus this equation. Okay, can somebody give me a simpler version? Do the plus minus with the common terms, what will I get? T and then uh, 0 0.05 Okay. When uh, this value reaches maximum, okay, what will happen? So I have to find out the maximum of this equation. I have to find out at what t this will become maximum, right? Okay. So when this will become maximum, what will happen? There was something like this within traffic as well. There was something like this we did in traffic as well for maximum flow for capacity. Love when the value reaches maximum, zero. some something, something becomes zero. zero. See, something becomes zero. Flow becomes zero. The slope becomes zero. You were saying slope or flow? Slope. 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 Huh? Speed, speed, right? Because 
the slope becomes zero. Okay, the same thing will happen here. Slope means slope means what? Slope means speed. What is this? How do I get the slope? Yeah. Okay. So now you do the differentiation, it will give the slope. And that should become equal to zero. Zero. Okay. So dl cubed dt, what will it be? T square. Huh? T square. This will be one, right? We are doing differentiation. differentiation. Yeah. So now it is what? 0 0.05 into 2? 0.1, huh? Yeah. How much is this? And this should be equal to 0. So what, at what time it is now 0? What is the value of t here? Again, if it comes out to be minus, it's not acceptable, just remove it. You take the other value, if it is. Thirty-eight point two minutes. Okay. Now you put this value in the length equation. How much is the length of the curve? Or length of the cube? Approx 50 vehicles, right? Yeah. We are calculating number of vehicles, right? Okay, so in this question, the arrival and departure both were varying over time, both had an equation, there was no constant rate. So, and we were asked to calculate total delay and the longest queue. To find out the total delay, I must find out the difference of area under the arrival and the departure line. So first of all, I took the first integral to get the equation for number of arrivals and departures. Then I took the second integral, no, uh, then I put them equal to find out the time at which the queue will be cleared, okay? Then I took the integral one more time to find the area under these curves and I took their difference, okay? The difference will give you difference and then I put the value of t, okay? So the difference after putting the value of the key, uh, t will give you total delay. It will give you total delay. Then you want to find out the length of the queue. The equation for length of the queue is arrival minus departure. So you have the equation for arrival, you have the equation for departure. You, you subtract them, you get length of the queue. This is the equation for length of the queue. We want this length to, be, to become maximum. When this length becomes maximum, that means the slope or I don't know what to call it, but the integral, oh sorry, uh, the derivative will become zero, okay? You took the derivative of the length equation, put it equal to zero, that happens at time 38.2. So you put in the length equation this time, this will give you the time of the maximum Q. So the Q is maximum at 38.2 and will clear in 60.5 minutes, okay? Again, for the sake of the practice, you can do one more thing. You can calculate average delay. What is the step you need to calculate the average delay? You need to find out number of vehicles. Okay, so from where do you find number of vehicles? Huh? Number of vehicles what? Arrived or departed? Arrived. Number of vehicles arrived. In this equation, you put the time when the queue is cleared. So it will give you number of vehicles arrived. Then divide what? With the number of vehicles? Total. 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 Yeah. Okay. Any questions? So, 
As I mentioned earlier as well, these equations can change. Every location can have a different equation for delay. So even we have done three examples. In all three of them, we have seen different equations. So you have to remember what do we mean by delay, what do we mean by length of the queue, and what do we mean by what. OK, you have to keep the concepts in mind. Very difficult, right? OK. What we were doing up till now was deterministic analysis. Now we are moving on to uh, stochastic analysis. Okay, so in stochastic analysis, everything or every value has a chance. Every value has a chance. Okay, so if you are applying the stochastic analysis, then you should know these five characteristics about the queue. The first thing is the distribution of arrival. Okay, the arrival rate is following which distribution? Okay, so we have seen a distribution earlier with a very interesting name. What was that? Poisson distribution. Okay, so we have the equations for calculating chance of number of vehicles arrived using Poisson distribution. These equations. We have already used them in certain examples. Okay, the p values. Okay, so any for any, if it is following Poisson distribution, for any x, you can calculate the p-value using the Poisson distribution equation. You can have uniform arrival as well. Okay, uniform means what? Now, earlier we said uniform means deterministic, right? It doesn't mean this. Uniform means every value has equal chance, like the flip of the coin. When you flip the coin, both sides have a chance, right? Okay, so if you say both sides have 50 50 percent chance, then it is uniform. In Poisson distribution, some values have more chance, some values have less. Okay, and there can be other distributions as well, you know, normal distribution from traffic and so on. So, first thing you should know is the vehicles are arriving using which distribution. Okay, if I want to calculate the probability of a value from the arrival, which distribution should I use? Okay, uniform, Poisson, normal, whatever. Method of service. Okay, how the vehicles come and leave. We know we already know two, LIFO and FIFO, right? Uh, hmm? yeah. What is that? Last in, first out. Leave in, what is it? Last in, first out, and so first in, first out. Okay, so it could be that, it could be based on priority, it could be random, more like Pakistan, and so on. It's Pakistan is random, OK? You guys are good. Huh? One bigger coming from here, one coming from here. You guys are very good, OK? Alhamdulillah. That's why we come here to ruin everything. OK. Then you should know the characteristic of the Q length. Is it finite or infinite? OK? What does it mean? Finite means that you have a specific space in which you will allow the queue to come. Okay, if it is beyond that, you will stop it. Okay, infinite means okay. Go to the end of the world. Okay, go in the sea and so on. We build build new road for you there. Okay, we will, we will not ask you to get out of the queue. Okay, that what it means. How much space you are giving for the queue? Distribution of service times. Okay, what is the rate of service? Per minute, how many? And is it constant or is changing? Okay. Distribution of service signs and channel layout. Up till now, we have just seen one channel. The examples which we have seen: toll booth was one, gate was one, okay, and so on. But there can be multiple channels as well. I gave you the example of the airport yesterday. In the airport, you can have multiple counters. So you have multiple channels. Okay. If there are multiple channels, then you have to, you should know their arrangement as well. Channels can be working parallel or in sequence. Okay? You can have multiple channels, but these channels can be parallel or in sequence. For example, if you go to the causeway, some of the channels are parallel. Okay? Like they will check your passport, then there's customs, then there's toll, and so on. Right? So these channels are in series okay but when you go for the passport check 
this is not only the only counter who is doing the passport check, right? There are other parallel channels as well. Okay. So in this situation, you see some channels are parallel to each other, and some channels are in series or sequence. Okay. So you should know that layout as well to perform the stochastic analysis for that. Okay. Let's say we have a case of MD1. What is MD1? MD1 means the arrival is stochastic. Arrival is stochastic. Okay. So why do we say M? Why not S? M means Markovian. M means Markovian. Okay. So when Mr. Markov died, he said, just use my name here. We are just, you know, honoring his last wish. So he doesn't come out of his grave. Okay? So if you use stochastic here, you will start to have ba bad dreams, and Mr. Markov will come and so on. Okay? So that's why we don't use it. And the other reason is, don't ask me. Then deterministic means the departure, the service is deterministic. And one means what? What was one? One channel. One channel. Okay. If you have this situation, then you can calculate the uh, average length of the queue, the waiting time in the queue, and the average time in the system. Wherever we are using bar, that means average. So average length of the queue, average waiting time in the queue, average time in the system. All of these are average values. Okay. So you can see in all these equations we are using oh. rho. Okay. So what is rho? Lambda upon mu. Okay. Lambda is rate of arrival, mu is rate of departure. Okay, lambda is arrival rate, mu is departure rate. Okay, when you take their ratio, we represent it with rho. Rho means uh, Q intensity. Rho means Q intensity. Okay, to have a Q, rho should be what? More than one or less than one? Just one. Hmm? Just one. It was written there. No. No. Because one, mu bigger than one, the would be three and. No, no. Service will be more, right? Service rate will be higher. Yeah. Okay. So then the Q will be less. Okay. Service rate is higher. That means the Q will be less. Okay. So. Uh, when rho is less than 1, rho is less than, so intensity is less, the Q intensity is less, okay, service rate is higher, arrival, so yeah, service rate is higher, arrival rate is lower, okay. So in that case, these equations are applicable. These equations are applicable when rho is less than 1, Q intensity is less, okay, which happens when arrival rate is less and departure or service rate is higher. Okay, let us take this example. We have a recreational park. Okay, all examples are about park, and we are wasting our time here. Right? Uh, the uh, average arrival rate to be 180 vehicles per hour, Poisson distribution, okay, over the entire period for park opening time, 8 a.m., whatever. And uh, compute the average length in vehicles, uh, average time waiting time in the queue, and average uh, time spent in the system. Okay, uh, so they are talking about the example of the recreational park. That was not this one, not this one, this one. Okay, in this example, they were taking 15 seconds to process one vehicle. How many per minute? Four per minute, right? 15 for one vehicle. So in one minute, we can have four vehicles. So, this is my service rate, okay? Good. Huh? Yeah. We are representing it with what? Mu. Okay. So mu is 4 per minute. Okay. Lambda is how much? Tell me. 3. 3? 
Five minutes? No, okay. Okay. Then my Q intensity is three by four. Okay. Which is how much? So those equations are applicable. The equations which I showed you are applicable. Okay, so I take these equations. Okay, these are the three things they are asking for. Tell me. You just need rho and mu, right? So what is the average length of the cube? Okay. Then W. So mu is this value. Oh. Since this is waiting time, so minutes. And the T. Six. Okay, now uh, the last thing in this, what is the difference between waiting time and, uh, and T? Waiting time is in the queue. We are waiting in the queue. Okay, after you go out from the queue, you will go where? Okay, to the gate or the booth or whatever. Okay, there you may spend some more time. Okay, for the service. So, this is the time when you are waiting behind. Okay, and this is the total time. So, you are waiting, then you moved to the booth or whatever, then you talked to them, you paid them, you got the ticket or whatever. So, this includes everything. So that's why this is higher and this is lower. This is just for the queue and this is for the entire process. So when you join the queue, when you are at the back of the queue, till you left the gate. Okay, like you, you are back on the road. Okay, so this is that time. So that's why it's higher and should be higher and this is what we mean by the time in the system. Clear? Okay, any questions? Queue is? Vegas, yes, Vegas. So you can see the time.